Hello, my friends. I'd like to share with you some construction ideas I have with the Top Bar Beehive. It's a beautiful November morning. What we're looking at is a view of my pond, and I want to show this one area. We're looking west. Right there is where my beehives are setting. This location is exposed to the east. The dam of the pond is on the west and north side. So it has a perfect shelter from the weather which blows in from the northwest and eastern exposure for the bees in the morning. This is the new location for my bee colonies. <clears throat> the uh, conventional hives are sitting there in the center and i um, going to try top bar hives this year. I constructed four of them and I have to get these set and with their east, easterly exposure um, the area here that's open um, is an area that when the dam to the pond was being constructed, the topsoil was scraped down to the subsoil by accident. And it left this area pretty barren uh, throughout the course of the year, so there's minimal mowing that has to be done and uh, no weeds uh, growing around or in front of where the beehives are going to be setting. Uh, what I want to do right now is look at the construction of one of these top bar hives. This is the hive and you can see this is the front. The main entrance uh, to the hive is right here in the center. I placed a little strip for landing for the bees. These plugs allow uh, ventilation and more access into the hive. These plugs uh, I turned on my lathe. Um, you can see hinges at the bottom. Uh, this is a flat board that is used for ventilation. It covers a screened area on the bottom. It's latched on the side. Uh, this would be opened in the summer to allow ventilation and to let any debris in, that's inside to fall uh, through the bottom. There is a screen on the underside. You can see here it's small enough to not allow the bees to access through it, but it allows any of the mites or any debris to fall, fall through. Uh, you can see plugs here on the both ends. This is to allow more than one colony to live inside the hive. Now I opened the lid so I, I have it hinged on the back side of the hive so that if I'm working the hive I'm not standing in front of the beef path, the flyway. Okay, the uh, inside the top cover I installed styrofoam board uh, to allow for keeping heat in and keeping it a little bit cooler in the summer, heat in and into the winter. Okay, the top bars. You can see I have a couple painted. This is to designate which ones are the followers. And the followers are a keystone shaped piece of plywood. Uh, that allows me to adjust where the bees can have access. 
from coming into the main part of the hive. You can see right here the main entrance and this follower can be adjusted to allow how much room the bees can have access to the colony at any one time. Uh, the fit in here is fairly snug. You don't want to have the bees crossing into the other sections of the hive. On these bars, the top bars, that the bees will uh, ex extrude their comb, their honeycomb, there's attached a uh, waxed cord. And this wax cord, it has beeswax on it, and I use a natural fiber. I hold the cord with staples. When the bees uh, start making their comb, they will ad uh, adhere the comb. This is a starter strip for them. They'll start building their comb on the cord, and they will glue the cord to the... Uh, this bar, this top bar, with their wax. So uh, the cord just has to be held on uh, strong enough so it's not falling, so it's being held in position. And the bees will make the permanent attachment of the comb to this board. The wedge shape or keystone shape should be a uh, natural uh, shape of the honeycomb as uh, they uh, allow it to be suspended from from the bar. Uh, when you uh, first start the colony you want to give them a minimum amount of space so that they organize the the combs in a in the tight area at the beginning of the hive and as the hive uh, continues to expand or grow and they need more room, you start moving these followers right along uh, to keep up with the growth of um, the expansion of the hive or the use. This is uh, <laughs> left over from the summer. No bees. Wasp nets. All of this material has been uh, constructed with scrap items laying around the farm. The uh, all the wood is. Uh, uh, any wood that I had laying around, none of it is pressure treated other than the legs to the uh, hive. These legs, you can see the, the grooves in them. These happen to come from uh, not pallets, but uh, bunks when they store wood or bring uh, material bundled to the hardware or lumber yard uh, they have them strapped together and these are pressure treated and uh, they're freebies so the legs may outlast the rest of the rest of the uh, the top hive. of the hive is covered this one is with a sheet of uh, rubber roofing that I had laying around and of course everything gets painted. The other hives are covered with a real heavy plastic that is salvaged from a uh, boatyard. Uh, covers that they use in the winter to uh, weather seal their boats for the winter time. And in the spring they peel the plastic off and throw bundles of it away. So that's a freebie item also. These access holes on the back side of the hive allows uh, the possibility of having multiple hives in 
one uh, top bar beehive. Um, I have no experience with these. I have never raised bees in these. So in the springtime I'm going to order packages of bees and see how they will adapt to a top bar hive. Uh, the followers in here, if multiple hives are going to be used, these will de determine what the size of each colony can be inside of these hives. Uh, it's very critical that these following bars fit tight so that the bees can't cross between the hives or they will destroy each other. There's another colony of mud wasps. Very good beneficial insects. We'll leave those alone. They look like they're still sealed. In the spring and summer, uh, this would be under full sun. Right now, you can see here, the uh, sun is hanging very low. We're in the middle of November, and uh, I guess we're in winter mode. There is the aquaponics greenhouse. oriented north-south. Here is the beeswax that I extracted from my uh, hives and after I uh, separate the um, honey from the wax I melt the wax in this uh, crock pot that I have. It's uh, the it's designated just for my beeswax and uh, it's the smallest one that I could find and it works really well. Uh, plug it in, turn it on and forget about it for a while and come back and it's melted. Uh, you can see different colors with this beeswax. After I melt it I poured the wax into molds so it makes it easier uh, to handle and it allows me to kind of get measurements uh, for the different uses for things that I do with the beeswax. Uh, some of the wax is very light in color. Uh, new wax is almost like a white. Uh, as the wax gets older, uh, the bees use it over and over, and I guess it darkens with the longer that they use it. Uh, the, it's still just as usable in as an older as it is with the new. With the top bar hives, the bees uh, draw the comb from the top bar and the wax string is what gives them their reference uh, to start building that comb. Uh, the way I wax the string, though, is I use my uh, crock pot. I have enough wax melted in there that uh, I take different cords, and I'm using all natural. This is cotton. These are cotton cords, and this is jute, and they're all natural fibers. And you can see that it's stiff, and that's because it's saturated with the wax. What really makes it efficient, an efficient use of the, the wax, is by taking the solid uh, cord, the solid roll, and basically cooking it, putting it into the hot wax and letting it sit there for a good while so that that uh, wax can penetrate through the entire uh, center of the core of uh, the strings and you can see this cotton here this is a, a thicker cord this is a kitchen cord that you would use to tie like when you bake a chicken or something and you tie the legs and bake it in the oven so it's a heavier cotton cord uh, 
now it's all super saturated. And then what I do is I just lay this out on, on my top bars, staple it down and trim it to length and it's good to go. Um, this is a real time saving thing to do here rather than play with an individual string trying to wax it. Um, I made a lot of extra. I have neighbors that are wanting to do the same thing, build their own top bar hives. So we're going to see how it's going to go this spring and summer. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.